what is new and interesting, and the South African public would be interested in this, was he recording every conversation that he had with everybody? Was he more interested in writing a book that would uh, mask his legacy as far as performance at ESCOM is concerned? Uh, and is that what this book is about? Because if the message is there's corruption at ESCOM, we've all heard it before. And that's not, as you correctly point out, the issue. The issue is what are you doing about it? Hello there, guys, and welcome to Daily Updates. So the former CEO of ESCOM, Mr. Andre De Recha, has finally released that book, Truth to Power, My Three Years Inside ESCOM. It's like um, a headline for a certain program produced by ENCA, Truth to Power. I mean, here's a CEO who failed at his job and then came up with claims. The claims is telling us that, well, I've reported it to the police, to the law enforcement, but he's not willing to say further. We know the law, the law enforcement is under ANC and he's saying that the politicians. So it's like they are playing games with us. We know for sure that whatever that the allegations he has, they will never come to life. Now, they got him uh, into parliament. They gave him a chance to reveal some of the things that he's alleging. The guy failed to say it. While we're having that problem, this man is releasing a book. My three years inside ESCOM. We should be reading about him telling us that my success is at ESCOM. But he's telling us these are the three years of whatever that happened in ESCOM. I mean, I haven't read the book, but I know for sure he's talking about the corruption and whatnot. But my problem is that this guy was a CEO for that three years or whatever. And while he was the CEO, he should have been improving ESCOM, but he was not. So he realized that, well, it looks like I'm going to get the boot. Why, why don't I just get some package, write a book, and then release that book while the topic is still hot, and then make money from it? I mean, it's not like he's saying that I'm writing a book and I'm giving the, the money away for charity. He's actually getting all that money for the book, the truth to power. What truth is Andre the Recha telling us? Like, the things that people like Andre the Recha are doing... They give us, like, like they make us look at someone like Pravin Godan as a messiah. Because today he was busy talking about the fact that uh, who's Andre the Recha? It seems like Andre the Recha is acting like a, a holy person amongst us and we are the ones who are wrong. I mean, you get that from Pravin Godan. You start getting worried like, what did Andre the Recha really do to make us, well, ending up Sounding like we are siding with people like Praveen Godan. I mean, whatever that Andre Teresa wants us to believe, we are not naive. You cannot tell me that a CEO of a battling entity like ESCOM had some time to write a book. I mean, he's literally not the one that is who's writing it, but there has to be some transcript between him and the actual person who's writing. So it's either you are doing that by a call, which is going to be very tiring, or you guys find time after work and meet there and discuss, hey, today I was drinking tea, and then here comes the supervisor, and then they start telling me about the tenders. That is like gossip. It's like Andre the Rich is writing a book and it's gossip because you were fired. Well, he was literally fired because he made all that interview and they decided like, my man, we can't work with you. So after that happens, he becomes like a bitter person. We wanted you to help us with the rot that was happening there. You left. Load sharing has been going. You left. Load sharing is still going. And you have the audacity to go there and say to the public, hey, read what I wrote here because it exposes ESCOM. I think we have been taken for a ride as South Africans because at the end of the day, it does appear like we don't have leaders. I mean... Such a country with over 60 million people, do we not have anybody that is not that doesn't have the qualities of being corrupt, that only has the qualities of looking at solving the problem, finishing the problem, and letting ESCOM become a, 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 an oiled machine? It looks like we don't have that. We might as well import some leaders from outside because ANC can't give us anybody. 
They can't go around South Africa and look for anyone. They are giving us people who failed there in Nampak and people who are coming and writing books. Is that the kind of leadership we want as South Africans? Because if that is the leadership that we are being given, we might as well tell ourselves that, well, stage 10, stage 20, whatever, we are waiting for you. Because we have no solution. I am really concerned by the fact that a man who was the CEO found time to write a book. The book about the stories of whatever corruption, be it or not, that was happening inside ESCOM. And then we are supposed to read that book and believe whatever that we have been told. What we would have liked from Andre the Richa is to just say, I'm no longer in South Africa, I'm somewhere. I'm doing a Skype call, whatever, Zoom meeting, or speak to any media and name and shame. Tell them whatever that happened, then stay there. Let us deal with that problem knowing that well, the minister who they are saying is corrupt is Praveen or it's Mantashe. But he's not willing to tell us that. And then we have to go and spend 300 rand for a book that, mind you, is not even telling us the real stories of what is going on. It, it's not like the book is telling all the rots. It's, it's a gossip. So we are being given a chance to gossip with Andre the Rachel. And of course, many people are going to buy this book because there are people who like reading. It doesn't matter whatever that they look at. They just like reading. But after reading, do you get any sense of uh, belonging to that whatever book that you read? Like, does it give you anything, any improvement inside your head? Like, hey, I've learned knowledge today. I don't think it does. And as South Africans, we need to start disassociating ourselves from things that don't build us. If you don't provide solutions to us, we must just disassociate ourselves from it because at the end of the day, this load sharing is going to stick with us forever. And it does seem like there is no one to relieve us from the load sharing. The less said about the president, the better because it is going to be like we're hating. At the end of the day, we are not hating. We just can't believe that we have a president who cannot afford us some solutions. I mean, they gave us Andre. Andre the Rachel. He did whatever he did. And then he wrote a book. He got a check. Andre the Rachel is living his life. But then the problem is that South Africa, as long as we don't get a real leader who can steal the money, will forever complain about load sharing. They all came. All the CEO came. Most of them have allegations. And while they smoke, there's some big fire burning there in the mountain. So we know for sure that we don't have leaders in the South Africa unless we get a different party. But for the guy who decides to be a CEO and write a book, shame on you. Because at the end of the day, that book doesn't give us solutions. It is just going for sales. And again, guys, as before, open for discussion. And until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.